Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. This month, our creative design team has started a new series called Embellishing Made Easy. We are going to focus on showing you ways to add embellishments to your paper crafting projects. Today, I am going to be working on a masculine layout of my husband and my youngest son. These were some photos I took while they were working on creating blocks for me for a mops craft project. Both of these night owls stayed up late to send all of these blocks for the next day. And you can see there's quite a bit of emotion shared here. So I thought I would record these memories on a scrapbook page. I'm going to start by using some wood grain paper for the background. This is going to bring out the theme of the photo, which is the wood blocks. I haven't quite decided which wood grain I want to use. I'm leaning more towards a darker color just so that the photos pop, but I want to make sure I just go through and see which one of these I like best. And to be honest, I do like that darker one, so I'm going to go ahead and snag it. I'm also going to be bringing in some mix-in papers. The blue bell in these mix-in papers matches the blue in my husband's shirt. So it's really going to pull out the color of the photos. I'm also going to grab a couple of other papers from this paper pack. I like all of these little tag elements and I plan on using a few of them for a banner on the page. I'm also going to be using a paper in here that has some hearts. Behind the hearts, there's kind of a wood grain crackle finish, and this matches the theme of the layout really well. I'm going to start by figuring out how I want to lay out my photos onto this page. I want that wood grain to show in the background, but I also want to bring out some of the blue color. So I'm going to go ahead and cut down some of the different papers from that mix-in paper pack. There is a blue and black stripe, but the stripes were just too harsh against the striped wood grain in the back, so I decided to use the quilted side instead. I've also grabbed a lighter wood grain paper to stack on top of that bluebell sheet. I'm not quite sure about this one yet, but I'm just going to leave it as is and keep working with the layout. To help these photos pop off the page, I've matted them in espresso cardstock. This espresso matches that background wood grain paper, and it's also going to help to balance out the colors in the photos. On the left side of the page, I'm going to add a zip strip in that espresso color and some of that heart wood grain paper. Not only are these going to help balance out that side of the page, but they're also going to add to the theme of the layout with those heart shapes. So at this point, I'm already starting to think of my embellishments. I've created a wood grain theme, a heart theme, and a masculine theme. So I want to start pulling in some embellishments that match all of the elements I've added to this layout. I'm starting out with that tag sheet, and I'm cutting down a variety of tags that are going to match the layout. One of the tags has a black wood grain crackle finish and it says this right here. So I know I want to use this flag for part of my banner. I'm also taking a look at the one that says this. It has hearts on it and I'm looking at a couple of the bluebell ones that also have hearts or flowers or I might choose a toffee wood grain one instead. I'm being very purposeful as I'm choosing these flags as embellishments for my page. For example, there's this one tag in a bluebell color with hearts in the background. It matches the other bluebell elements and it also matches the hearts that I chose there over on the left. It also has a little bit of toffee on it which matches the brown shades on the layout. I've chosen to use this toffee colored tag because it has a wood grain background. It also matches some of the other elements on the page and it has a little black circle on it which is going to match the black tag that I chose that says this right here. Now I had debated on using the little tag with the heart that says love this and just do a toffee blue toffee but since I'm already using a tag with a sentiment I chose to use the plain tag instead. So we talked a little bit about color when I was choosing the embellishments. I like to stick to that gallon quart pint ratio. Now you can choose different tones within your gallon or your quart or your pint, but you wanna kind of stick within a specific color palette just so that your layout feels balanced. 
On this layout, I have quite a bit of neutral tones with the espresso and the toffee colors. I also have added some black and white, and I have used quite a bit of that bluebell because the bluebell is going to pull out the color in the photos. So at this point, I'm going to start sticking things down onto that wood grain paper. I want to add a little bit of color and distressing along that bluebell edge. So I've gone and just rubbed my espresso ink pad along all of the edges, and now I'm taking an edge distressor on the edge of the paper. These are available on Amazon. They're also available on Cricut, or I've also seen people use their scissors to do edge distressing. Now I've placed down this little bluebell paper right there on the page and I started to distress and lay down that light colored wood grain and then once again I just really started struggling with it. It just felt like even after adding that distressed ink to it, it still wasn't quite the look that I wanted. So I ended up going through my craft stash and I found a piece of Bloom with Grace espresso paper. I also added a piece of that bluebell stripe over on the right side, and I'm adding a little strip of the polka dots that have black, toffee, and bluebell polka dots there over on the left side. By adding all of these elements, it actually pulls the page together a lot more. It brings out that bluebell color in the background, and it really helps my photos pop up off the page. I'm also going to be moving the banners down to the lower right side of the page. You can see I added some stitching on two of the banners to match the stitching that was already on this black banner. After changing out those background papers and moving my photos around, I realized that I have more of an asymmetrical layout. So I needed to move those banner elements to the lower portion of the page. When you're creating an asymmetrical layout, you want to balance larger items with smaller items. You also want to be aware of how much weight you are adding to the page with your embellishments. The photo of the two boys looking at each other and giggling is my primary focal photo. So I want the largest amount of visual weight, the area of embellishment to be around that photo. This is going to not only help balance out this layout visually, but it's going to help me create a nice, large, bold statement at the lower portion of the page. So I've gone ahead and added some ink distressing to a couple of the flags here. I flipped over the tops, which is something I always do with my banners, and then I threaded some mink twine behind those banners. I'm also popping them up a little bit off the page using some thin 3D foam tape as I lay them down under that photo. Now I'm creating a few little thread trails with that mink twine, and I'm adhering them down onto the page using some liquid glass. Liquid glass works really well for thread trails because it dries nice and clear and you can create a very thin line of adhesive with that nice little tip. Now that we've created a larger embellishment on the page, I want to bring in some smaller elements to balance out this layout. I've chosen a few of these little strips that came on that tag sheet, one in bluebell that says loving and one in black. I'm just going to cut these two strips out using my paper cutter and layer them above that focal photo on the page. Once again, I'm repeating patterns and colors that I've already used on the page. The bluebell matches the bluebell tag and that black strip matches the black tag at the bottom. I have this bluebell flag here at the bottom and I want to add more bluebell color to the layout. So I've grabbed a couple more of these flags and we're going to be placing some in the upper right hand corner. I also want to use one in a toffee color so that I can start creating a visual triangle with that toffee shade. The first little tab I grabbed had some black stripes in it and I layered it with a bluebell strip I cut and a little heart wooden button. This really was not working for me. I was not a fan of the black stripes. I felt like it was adding too much black up into that corner and the blue tab seemed a little bit plain. So I ended up just cutting apart one of the tags on the tag sheet. The checkered design on this tag matches the other checkered and fabric-like elements on this page. As I was layering these two elements together, I suddenly noticed that there was a tab that had hearts on it. 
I don't know where I missed this. There's so many little tabs on this sheet, I probably just glanced right over it, but I decided to use it instead. Not only does it have hearts on it, which matches other elements on the page, but it has a tiny little strip of black. This will add just a subtle bit of black in that upper corner to help me form a visual triangle. Now I'm going to grab my embellishment binder and start adding elements to the page. Here are a few little tips and tricks when you're adding embellishments. Always repeat color, shape, and pattern. Now we talked about color and we talked a little bit about shape, but let's talk about pattern. You saw that I repeated that heart pattern throughout. I'm also grabbing elements that have some more of that plaid pattern. So we have that little craft heart that matches that espresso pattern in the background, and it also matches that little check tab at the top. You also want to alternate sizes. You're going to see me add a lot of craft colored hearts on here. They're all the same color, but they vary in size. Always remember your balance of threes or balance of thirds. Create your visual triangle as you're laying things down. Odd numbers do help with that. And to create more of a unified, cohesive effect, always make sure you're touching or layering your elements. I like to use both thin and thick 3D foam tape to help me vary all of my layers. Now many of you might be wondering what the term visual triangle means. Designers have been using the visual triangle for years. It basically means that on your page layout, there is an invisible triangle connection between the photographs or the text or the elements. Now here you can see that I am distressing this little journaling block I created. Now I made it white because I have some white sentiments down in the black tag below and I have a white strip over on the left. This is going to help me form that invisible triangle to help our brains easily process all the elements and embellishments and photographs that are on this page. I'm also going to be using some acrylic letters. These are only available to consultants, but if you're interested in them, let me know. Since that strip over on the left is such a bold white strip and the journaling strip is such a bold white piece, I decided to also make the title white using these acrylic letters. Now, these acrylic letters do not come with punctuation, so I had to improvise. I wanted to spell daddy's boy and there was no apostrophe. So I ended up grabbing the dot from one of the lowercase eyes and popped it in place. I figure I could just use an embellishment on one of those eyes later. To make that title nice and bold, I'm going to add a stamped sentiment. Now the Moments With You comes with those little dies over there on the right, but I'm just going to be stamping the sentiment that says Every Moment With You. I want to create a white sentiment, so I'm going to be using Versamark ink with white embossing powder. Now normally I try to do all of my stamping before I place things down, so I am so glad that this turned out because I don't know what I would have done if I would have messed this up when I stamped it down onto the layout. To help me with my letter placement, I'm going to grab my pencil and just draw a light line across the top. I'm going to start out with the Y in Daddy's. It's going to end right next to that sentiment every moment with you, and then I'm going to work my way backwards. I'm using the Tombow Mono Liquid Glue to glue down these acrylic letters. It has a little bit of play before it dries clear and dries permanently. So I'm able to wiggle those letters around just a little bit on the page before they are permanently in place. All right, so now I've got that great big bold title here at the top with that stamp sentiment underneath. And we're going to go ahead and add that little white journaling box over here on the right. So you can see we have formed that visual triangle of big bold white images on the page. Earlier I added that wooden button in the top right corner of the page and it's been threaded with some mink twine. I want to repeat some more wooden elements on the page. Remember we talked about repetition when it comes to adding your embellishments. So I've added a wooden heart next to that word daddy's boy and I'm adding a heart next to that arrow that's pointing to my focal photo. As I finish adding embellishments, I want to tell you a little bit more about these photos. I used to help out with our mops crafting activities, and my husband often was granted the wonderful opportunity to help me cut out various items, like hundreds of little wooden blocks. 
the rest of the kids would be in bed and these two would just be up enjoying time together. And my wonderful, loving husband always took the opportunity to teach our children new things, even when they were little. Our son here is only about two and a half years old, but he's sitting on his daddy's lap and he's learning how to sand wooden blocks. And the time they had together is just so precious to me. I really wanted to make sure that I recorded these memories. So as you can see, I did type up my journaling on that little block. I've placed it onto the page. I'm going to move a few more embellishments and call this page complete. And here is my daddy's boy page, all complete with the wood grain paper and those beautiful mix-ins with a few little odds and ends that I had in my stash. This would also make a great Father's Day page. So Father's Day is coming up. Make sure you grab a couple of photos of those dads in your lives and create a nice little page full of memories. I hope that today's process video helped you to understand how easy embellishing can be. We talked about repetition of shape and color and pattern on this page. We also talked about creating that visual triangle with the title and all of the little strips we added on there. I also talked about how to make sure that all of your colors and your elements are unified with pattern. On this page, we used a lot of wood grain and hearts and some of that plaid pattern. We also talked about the repetition of shapes, like the different hearts I added on this layout. I hope that you're able to take some of these tips and tricks and use them on your future scrapbook pages. Our creative design team has had some wonderful embellishing made easy videos for you all week long, and there are a few more coming up through the rest of the week. As you saw in my layout today, there are so many simple ways that you can add embellishments to your layout. You just need to follow a few little simple rules and all of these ladies have some wonderful ideas for you. Make sure that you are subscribed to each one of our channels so that you don't miss out on any of these videos. I have posted a link to the Embellishing Made Easy playlist here above for you. I have also listed all of the links to the individual videos in the description below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're at it so that you don't miss out on future videos. I hope you have a wonderful week. I can't wait to see what you create. <music>